Um, now this is dried thoroughly, these two parts, I can re-scrab that panel line. Luckily the uh, sponsons uh, will um, be fitted on here later anyway, so we'll cover that area there up. But what I want to concentrate is uh, this area around here, around the uh, loading ramp. It's very basic around here, and I was looking at the photographs of the uh, 48 uh, Italier Chinook that I made, and they incorporate a lot of detail around here, most of it anyway, so I don't know why Trumpeter couldn't. Uh, these frames are far too dainty. I've got these where the uh, ejection process has uh, left these uh, marks everywhere. It should be nice to clean up. But what I do want to add is there's a structural panel around here. See where I put it in pencil? Uh, this is Italier, what I got with a kit. Uh, walk around. Great little booklet. Great idea. So you can see how busy it is around there. It's like Piccadilly Circus. Now I'm not going to add all that. Life's too short. But what I do want to do is add this bit of structural framing round here with the holes. Just add a bit of interest. So I've drawn in pencil roughly where it would go. And using a bit of cartridge paper, I've placed it on the side there. And then with a bit of graphite, picked up the relevant points that will help me transfer that shape to this. And then that will be transferred to a sheet of plastic card, cut out and then stuck on. I was looking at the uh, insulation or the quilting and I was trying to come up with a few ideas about a better representation than it is there. Not so much for the uh, cabin area, but mainly for the um, cockpit area. I'm still thinking about that because I can only do with what I've got to hand, which isn't a lot. This area and the roof, I'm not bothered about because by the time it's uh, enclosed, you're not gonna see much anyway. But the cockpit area, I'm quite visible. So it would be nice to do something with the uh, quilt in there. We shall see. So the next thing to do is to transfer that shape there onto this bit of paper and then transfer that to a bit of plastic card. Take the drawing to the plastic card. And now my job is to uh, cut this out. So I'll take these together and then start uh, marking the centres for these holes. So these um, have been cleaned up and the holes drilled out. I've left a bit of excess on either end here. It's easier to trim back than to add. And it should, as I said, sit in there, something like that. I won't force it, but you get the idea. Now the next issue I had was uh, trying to clean up these uh, moulding marks here, all these little squares or rectangles. I've, I've added a floury wash around here, that's why it's a bit grubby, just to uh, point them out to you. Now I started cleaning them up, but it was a nightmare, and I thought there's got to be another way to do it. So the other idea I had, using this uh, evergreen plastic strip, and what I did was I created a, like a little jig, a spacer, and that equates the space in between each frame. Now, of course, that one there is slightly longer. It had to be different, didn't it? But the rest of them equate to uh, that length there. So using that, I can place that down like that. And then, using it as a jig, I can crop so I know they're all going to be roughly the right space. And that will give me all this sort of crap. And with those, I'm hoping to hide these marks or distract using these uh, bits of plastic. And here's one I did earlier. So you can see those uh, moulding marks are very hard to see now. Your eyes distracted to these. But I think as a, a quick and easy uh, 
fix, it works quite well. With a few cuts of primer, it should look uh, a lot better than, uh, than that. So that's uh, all added. These stringers, bracing or structural plate. I've readied the spares box for a few components. The goal is really is to distract from these uh, ejector pins or whatever they're called. Which wasn't my intention, my initial intention was just to clean these pin marks up and that was it. Uh, bearing in mind that these um, frames are too shallow and they're incorrect the way they're spaced. So that has a knock-on effect with trying to create something uh, a bit more realistic. So it's all very generic, but I think it does a trick. Uh, next thing to do is to um, add a coat of paint, which will tell me so much more. It's hard to look at this and decide whether it's working or not. So a coat of paint and it will tell me yay or nay. That goes for um, both sides. Uh, while I was... Um, Looking around this area, I noticed the uh, ramp hydraulics. These are the kit parts. And for some reason, uh, they fit at the surface uh, like that, and they go straight down. And I'm sure they go at an angle. So I've been these, bit of plastic tubing, Similar position that it is uh, looking at the photographs. And then I use this uh, aluminium rod, which I will clean up later and crop to size sometime later in the build. And then that will shove in there and just adjust and cut it uh, later on. Uh, that's the trouble doing this. Um, I, I hadn't planned on going this far, but did. So that's a coat of paint on the uh, those areas. You can see how it just um, seats everything, for want of a better word. So you can tell straight away that uh, whether it works or not. So I'm reasonably happy with that. Maybe I could do with a bit more stuff around here. Now I want to start uh, painting things. All these bits here. I'll talk about the ramp in a minute. I just want to talk about why I split the cargo floor in two. I took great care and it's a very sharp scalpel blade and just gently scored until it eventually uh, worked its way through. I need a nice um, close fit, no gaps because there's no way I'm going to, to fill these. I've split them for the simple reason that when I come to, once all this is all painted and the cargo floor as well, when I come to assemble it all and then put the seats in, I've got access to the leg struts on this side. That was no problem, never issue. But on the other side, there's no way I could have done it. I'd have put the seats in here, but when I come to close it up, the bottom of the seats would have been flapping. I'd have, I'd have had no access uh, to adding the legs. But by splitting the cargo floor, I can put the seats in and I've got access to add the uh, bottom legs. Now the problem I may end up with is that when I come to join the fuselages and these two bits together is making sure that these two pieces fit flushly. There's no lip. I don't want a lip whatsoever. I want it nice and flush. So my idea is is to put tabs in between these spaces here. So I've marked off these raised areas that the cargo floor sits on in pencil. So I can add um, my tabs. They're going to be quite long and quite big. They'll fill that space near enough and probably stick out around here, maybe even more. No tab here because I've got the lifting hook bay. So I'll have one, two, three, four, five big tabs. And hopefully when I come to join the fuselage, they, in theory, will give it a, a nice, secure, tight fit. Which means that uh, the floor won't be lifting up because of the tabs. 
and it won't be going down because it'll be secured with these raised parts here, in theory. Um, I've been looking at a lot of photographs and it seems to be a very light grey on the floor and internally, but I do want to differentiate the quilting slightly, just a different shade, maybe add a bit of green to it, very subtle green, almost something like that maybe. I want to do um, slightly different shades just so it breaks it up. So I've cut out the um, the parts for the electronics bay, the um, eBay area. Should be all in here. I've cleaned the shelves. Uh, there's a few magic boxes to put on. As I said, um, the helicopter I'm doing, the RAF one, will probably look completely different. Probably more magic boxes or less, I don't know. But you can see we've got ejector pin marks here that I've had to fill in. Not that uh, you're going to see much anyway. But these will be a grey. We've got the quilting parts that fit either side internally. And there's a, a roof one as well that fits in there. This quilting is terrible. The more I look at it, it's horrible. Um, I've tried a different few uh, different experiments, uh, but they really haven't worked. So they're cleaned up, ready to paint. But while I'm um, going to be doing the floor, I need to do the um, ramp door. And this is going to require a bit of work. And there's three parts. There's also uh, four parts in here that fit in case you wanted the uh, ramp extensions added, which I don't. So this bit, uh, let's see how it goes now. Yeah, goes something like that. And then it's glued like that. And then we've got all this going on, which is no good. Sausages. So I need to secure and make this, um, strengthen this so we've got no give. And then I need to sort out these edges, clean these up and fill them. Also I need to put a bit of a, there's a, a shape that goes in here that I need to make from plastic card. So that needs adding as well. So there's a, a bit of work to do with the um, ramp door. And I can't start painting till this is sorted out. So I need to um, get on with uh, sorting this out. I'm going to end it here now. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. And I hope you can make it for the uh, next one.